A lot of you out there watching are parents. You know the ups and downs of dealing with children. They throw tantrums, make messes, and can drive you crazy. Your kids will hit you up for money, beg you for a ride somewhere, and make you late for more events than you can remember. But every once in a while, as parents, we get to flip the script and use our kids as an excuse to not do something. Have a family barbecue you don't want to attend? Oh, sorry. My kid's sick. Got to stay home. Asked to stay late at work? Can't. Got to rush home. Daughter's got a recital. Son's got a football game. But if you're the speaker of the house, you get to use children as an excuse to stay in Congress well past your expiration date. Because yesterday, Nancy Pelosi made this announcement. When people ask me what are the three most important issues facing the Congress, I always say the same thing. Our children, our children, our children. That is my why, why I am in Congress, for the children. This is my story, and this is my song. As you hear me say, when you're in the arena, you have to be able to take a punch or throw a punch for the children. That is why I am running for re-election to Congress. That's right. Nancy Pelosi, at age 81, is running for re-election. She says she's doing it for the children. But whose children exactly? Her own children. Paul Pelosi Jr. is 52 years old, and let's just say he and Hunter Biden would get along really well. He's been tied up in a ton of shady business that federal agents are digging into. Is she clinging to power to protect little Pauly P? Perhaps. And we'll have a special report tomorrow on the offspring of the most powerful Democrats in Washington. But Paul, her baby boy, isn't the only reason Nancy won't let go of power. There's still a lot of money to make. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. <laughs> Nancy isn't running to help the children. She's running to help herself. And she's made a career doing just that. Pelosi first entered Congress in 1987. And since then, she's billed herself quite a bank account. She's become one of the wealthiest members of Congress, with assets as high as $315 million. A lot of scratch for a public servant, making less than six digits for three decades. So how did she become so rich? As usual in Washington, this was a family affair. Her husband, Paul, is a businessman who may enjoy a little pillow talk with his wife, the Speaker of the House. Paul Pelosi Sr. has had a history of perfectly timed stock trades while his wife has been running the People's House. In March of last year, he pulled off a $2 million Microsoft trade just two weeks before the company got a $22 billion contract to sell the Army high-tech headsets. In December 2020, Paul and Nancy got a million dollars worth of Tesla stock options right before Biden announced electric car incentives. And in June, the Pelosi family cashed in big time just as Congress was debating what to do with big tech, making a cool five million from Google's parent company. So while Nancy slow walks antitrust legislation to break up big tech, her family taking advantage and laughing all the way to the bank. They must think we're idiots. Because just look at the tech companies your family's still invested in. Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Microsoft. Slack. The list goes on and on and on. Maybe this is why Pelosi defended Congress's right to trade stocks last month. She didn't want to kill the golden goose. The members of Congress and their spouses be banned from trading individual stocks while serving in Congress. No, I don't know to this. Second one, we have a free market economy. They should be able to participate in that. This isn't new. Back in 2011, 60 Minutes pressed her pretty hard on the same thing when she raked in millions from a sweetheart Visa credit card IPO. Watch. Madam Leader, um, I wanted to ask you why you and your husband back in March of 2008 um, accepted and participated in a very large IPO deal from Visa. At a time, there was major... Uh, legislation affecting their credit card companies making its way through the um, through the house and well, did you consider that to be a conflict of interest the, yeah, I, I don't know what your point is of your question is there some point that you want to make with that well I, I, I guess what I'm asking is do you think it's all right for uh, a speaker uh, to accept 
uh, a very preferential and favorable uh, stock deal. Well, we did. You participated in the IPO. Well, I have many. And at the time, you were speaker of the house. You don't think it was a conflict of interest, or had the appearance no, of a it, conflict not, of interest? No, it, it only has the appearance if you decide that you're going to have a, a, a elaborate on a false premise. But it it it's not true, and that's that. I don't understand what part's yeah. not true. Yes, sir. Um, that I, that I would you. act upon an investment. How dare anybody question her honor and integrity? <laughs> Everyone in Congress is doing it anyway. Last year, members of Congress cr traded about $300 million in stocks and assets. And guess what? They all outperformed the market. <laughs> Pelosi is just the best at it. If Nancy wasn't writing laws, she'd probably run a hedge fund. The Wolf of Washington. Run for Congress and you too could buy some extravagant properties like this Napa Valley mansion Nancy and Paul bought worth about $25 million or a gorgeous waterfront condo in Washington, D.C., that Pelosi property now worth over two mil. Or the family's multi-million dollar red brick mansion in California's Pacific Heights. Could be yours if you just spend your whole life in Washington playing the inside game. And while the Pelosi's are living the high life in swanky homes, her district is turning into the Thunderdome. Welcome to another edition of just look at this drone footage, courtesy of the DailyMail.com, showing a homeless encampment in the center of San Francisco. The area has been overrun with tents, needles, drug addicts. And this is the district of the leader of the Congressional Democrats. Maybe Nancy could invest more in her district instead of her portfolio. If Nancy dumped a few shares, she could help make San Francisco less of a dump. A little goes a long way. Just a few crumbs. Instead, she'll continue to be the Warren Buffett of Washington. That is, until you, the American people, step up, and you have. The heat's on the speaker, and suddenly she's flip-flopped. Now, now, she thinks Congress may have to rein in the day trading. Watch. I trust our members. If, in fact, we should have severe uh, penalties for delay in reporting on Stock Act, then do that. You give a blanket attitude of we can't do this and we can't do that because we can't be trusted. I just don't buy into that. But if members want to do that, I'm okay with that. That's right, Nance. Promise to stop once you get caught. <laughs> we asked Nancy Pelosi for comment, and here's what she said. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Sorry, that was the wrong tape. The speaker has not yet responded to our inquiry. But when it's not about the money, it's usually about the power. This morning, we found out liberal justice Stephen Breyer may be retiring from the Supreme Court, leaving Biden to pick a replacement. So if Joe picks Kamala, that would create a vacancy in the vice presidency. This would leave Nancy Pelosi an opening to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove Biden from office. Guess who takes over as commander in chief? You guessed it, Nancy Pelosi up, oh, President Pelosi. Now that theory's bonkers and will likely never happen, I admit. We're just exercising our constitutional imagination. Hey, if we can't get away with insider training, at least let us have a little fun. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.